Well, you could say on Saturday night that the Hoosiers rebounded from the previous game. They got the W. Let's get into talking about what happened on Saturday night against Ohio State. Let's get into it. Walker, three on the way. Oh! Hello, and thank you for joining me on this episode of Indiana Sports Connection. I am your residential anchor, Aaron, lifelong Hoosier fan, breaking down the game. Let's get into talking about the Ohio State game and what happened. A lot of improvement, a lot of improvement, and there is a lot to talk about in this game as it unraveled, but more so, and many times throughout this game, it looked like Indiana might let this game slip away, and they got the victory. And that's all that is important. We don't argue with winning, as the great Kent Sterling says, so I'm not going to argue with it. C.J. Gunn, definitely my player of the game. This guy has shown a lot of resolve and a lot of grit because the previous two games, Anthony Leal took a lot of his minutes and Gunn was not getting the playing time. This guy is a sophomore. He needs to get his shots in. I really like his shot. And the confidence that he brought, he scored 10 points. But a lot of positives to take away from this game. If you notice from my opening, and if you watched my last video, rebounding, blocking out, I've gone on some real rants about that. But Indiana in this game, the rebounding, again, wasn't there. Now, a couple of players, CJ Gunn, and I wanted to isolate these two plays as CJ Gunn and uh, Galloway. Maybe I'll put this at the end. They both had a couple of killer blockouts, and I don't like to leave that stone unturned. So, uh, good job to those guys. And uh, if I see you blocking out on this Hoosier team, I might point you out and say, look, look, he actually did something that, you know, they teach kids how to play basketball. But let's. Uh, get into the episode what happened in this game and if you're like me i mean i don't follow ohio state basketball so when i saw that battle guy and we know that guy because he almost single-handedly beat us at minnesota last year and as soon as i saw that guy on ohio state i didn't know he transferred there and i'm like oh my god this guy he has torn up indiana in the past so He got his points in, but one of those plays deep in the game, it was a real critical play when he caught the ball with his foot on the line. That's a big mistake. And, uh, you know, I hate to be harsh, but it's like, you got to know where that line is. I mean, you practice enough corner shots like that. You got to know where your foot is. But Hoosiers get the victory. Let's go through just some of the stats. Uh, First off, I mean, not to be negative, first off, because they did get the victory, but rebounding, I just know this uh, from right off the top of my head. They got out-rebounded 50 to 30 in this game, so that's why I opened the show with that. So that was not just a hook to get you to watch this video. It was actually, you know, this is the truth of this team. Now, what happened at Nebraska was if you don't rebound and you turn the ball over 19 times, the Hoosiers only turned the ball over four times in this game. So, all right. So, field goals. We were 46% on field goals. They were 36%. Uh, they were 7 of 27 on three-pointers. That's an amazing stat. 7 of 27 on three-pointers. A lot of people gripe about Indiana not shooting enough three-pointers, and I am myself. But some of these teams, when you play them, I mean, if you're if you're making seven of twenty-seven, a lot of times you're just doing the defense a favor by by letting them rest and taking that three, and you're only making twenty-five percent. That's that's not a not a good percentage. I use percentage. They were five of twelve. They put up twelve. I'd like to see them put up like eighteen more in these games, but so they were forty-one percent. Um, 12 of 16 on free throws. Uh, Ohio State was 8 of 9. I mean, really uh, good defensive effort for Indiana in this. I would say, as a team, as I watched this game this morning because I was watching the Colts last night. But like I was breaking down this game this morning like some plays. They played a lot better team defense. Now, where a lot of teams get points on Indiana is second chance points. That's why watching them, the blocking out and the rebounding, can just completely drive you crazy because right here so i mean we we shirt up the turnovers so i mean so 
We had five turnovers. They had 13 turnovers. So there, I mean, we gained some possessions right there. But then when offensive rebounds, we had eight offensive rebounds, and they had 23 offensive rebounds. I mean, that's killer. That's I, I cannot do quick math, but 23 minus eight is uh, 15. I mean, that's 15 extra possessions off of offensive rebounds or or second chance points. The biggest problem I see with Ware underneath the basket and Ware scored eight points in the first half and scored zero in the second half. And this game was kind of an anomaly. Only three players, <laughs> Malik Renew was Superman in the second half of this game, totally brought Indiana back. Uh, scored, renew, and I'm still giving the player of the game to CJ Gunn just for the potential, you know, because we know renew is he's got a pretty shot and he is really good at finishing around the basket. Yeah, renew 23 points, Xavier Johnson 18, and we're gonna have to talk about Xavier Johnson too because played a much better game. I did notice the first few plays of the game. And maybe this helped uh, Xavier Johnson settle in a little bit more. The first few possessions, uh, Galloway brought the ball up the floor. I thought that was maybe a good move by coaching to not allow him to, you know, try to just go balls to the wall uh, right from the beginning and give him a little bit of time to just, I think he can have the tendency to want to go 100% right from the beginning on every play. And he's just got to know, he just got to ease into it a little bit. I mean, you do have to play intense, but he has some really nice drives. I mean, Ohio State does not stop drivers. There was a couple of times, I mean, he drove left hand all the way in with his left hand. Nobody stopped him. Just, I mean, that's, those are the kind of plays that drive me crazy when they happen to my team. But a few plays like that. Galloway, four points in this game, seven assists. So Galloway getting it done on the assist. Yeah, Kalel where he had eight points, two assists, and six rebounds. Um, you can see that uh, some of these players in the Big Ten, it is rough and tumble underneath the basket. I think Ware just needs to like get his body wider. <laughs> I mean, I know he's kind of slight built. And I was thinking of this when I was watching the game this morning. It's like... Is he kind of a comp to like Todd Lindemann a little bit? And I got to go back because, I mean, I haven't watched Todd Lindemann play in forever. But I just remember always thinking that he did not go strong to the basket. He was a seven-footer, had a pretty good-looking shot. Lindemann could really shoot the ball for a seven-footer, but just didn't have that inside presence. But he did serve a purpose. I mean, he played a lot for for Bob Knight, and uh, he also – was similar to where and that he was a good free throw shooter, I believe. And, you know, some of this stuff, it's nostalgia in my head. So uh just love Todd Lindemann's great, great hairdo with the hair parted right down the middle with it feathered out. I don't know if he learned that from Steve Alford, but uh that was the look. That was that was an Indiana look for a while there. Eric Anderson, same look. But all right, enough of uh nostalgia here. Let's keep talking about the game. Uh there was a group that was on the floor late in this game and Mike Woodson went to kind of a different rotation and it was so renew and uh, it was renew and Anthony Walker were out there with gun, I believe, and Johnson and uh, Galloway. So you had three guard lineup. You had renew playing inside and you had Walker on the wing. That was a very effective lineup. I mean, going forward, I would say that's something to keep in mind where uh, where at times, I mean, if he's getting dominated on rebounding down low and, you know, he can be a guy that can shoot from the outside, but through some of these past games and like I talked about in the last episode, when Indiana's really trying to force the ball to him down low, it's a no-go. He, he can dominate certain players, but there are certain guys who, who just have a lot bigger body and a lot bigger like presence down there, and he's just going to struggle against those guys in the Big Ten. I mean, that's why they call the Big Ten. Uh, Dan Dockage calls it the Thick Ankle League. So, I mean, all these big, slow movers down low, it's tough, tough, tough to um, 
drive in in the Big Ten because there are a lot of big, thick guys in the Big Ten. And it's been that kind of league. I mean, that's why the Big Ten struggled in the tournament because a, a lot of the other leagues don't play exactly like what the Big Ten's doing right now. So, and who knows? That'll change over time. Uh Mbako in this game just really got kind of got taken out of it. Um, I mean, one play where he really kind of like didn't see the double team coming. He got trapped in the middle of the court by a double team. And, you know, you want to say, you know, you want to see that coming and, and get rid of the ball. But I would say, I mean, that happens when you're playing basketball. I mean, you're just going to get trapped. Um, but, you know, you do want to. I mean, if you see that double team coming and you can get rid of it a little bit quicker, but hopefully, you know, he can just learn from that and move on. But what did you think of Ohio State? Ohio State is a team where when I watch them, I don't know what kind of game plan they're, what kind of game they're trying to run. I feel like they run just a lot of isolation ball and a lot of bully ball, the kind of players they've had the past few years around the basket. I don't know why. I mean, ever since they've had... Just some of their better guards have left here in the past few years. They've had some better guards in the past. Great win for Indiana. Had to come home and get this win. I was thinking about this like all day, you know, before the game yesterday. I'm like, you know, they lose this game. It very much will feel like how last year when they they lost a game bad on the road and then lost to Northwestern at home. That was right at the beginning of January. And we started out. And it's just a Hoosier way to think of all these (laughs) negative things. It's like... What could they do if they would have lost this game? It would have been bad, but they got the victory. Now you can look ahead, go to Rutgers here. I told you he going to win down there on Saturday night and they're going to be okay. What did you say? I said they win down there on Saturday night. Everything going to be okay. You know, I know you told me that everything was going to be okay if, uh, They won there on Saturday night. So uh, thank you for reminding me uh, how upset I was after the uh, Nebraska game. And your wish came true, Hillbilly Monkey. So the Hoosiers won this game and they got Rutgers on Tuesday night. It's going to be at, oh God. And could could you ever be more thankful that Geo Baker, after playing like eight years of college basketball, is finally gone? Uh and uh, tr- the their really good defender uh, for Rutgers, he is gone as well. Because um, I saw him playing in the NBA, I believe. Uh, that guy was a really, really great defender, the guy with all the tattoos. But, um, shoot, I can't think of his name. But Rutgers playing at the rack Tuesday night. So I'll make a video on Wednesday, and we'll break down that game. Go Hoosiers. Hopefully... We get this victory because we got a run up here where we play Rutgers and then we play. All right. So the Hoosiers have Rutgers. Then we got Minnesota at home. I don't like to look too far ahead, but then Purdue at home. So you want to take care of business. The Purdue game is going to be huge, but you want to take care of business against Rutgers. That's going to be one game on the road that, they definitely, they're going to have the best chance to win. I mean, if they play like Rutgers on the road, that's a game they definitely can build off of, maybe some road success and get some of the role players there at Rutgers playing at the rack, maybe get some role players, a little bit of confidence on the road, and that could go a long way towards this team improving. Just seeing some shots go in on the road for some of these young guys would just do wonders to just help their confidence, but... Great win for the Hoosiers. I don't want to like bash on them too much. Yes, the rebounding still an issue. Uh, they still have a lot of issues, but they're building bricks of progress. So we'll be looking forward to that. Until next time, stay classy out there, Hoosier fans.